What's going on everyone? It is Will Mitchell here. Today we're doing a highly requested video. That is Secret Beach versus the Northeast end of Ambergris Key versus Mahogany Bay. We did this about a year ago and we've had a few people ask us, can you guys give us an updated version on that? And we thought, you know what? It's been a year, it's time, so let's dive into it. We're gonna talk about a few different factors here. So what we have on our list, proximity to town, building. So logistics, is it on grid? Is there project management? Is there road access? We're gonna talk about those features of every location. Then we're gonna talk about the price, probably one of the most important things, but maybe more important than price, is it in the path of progress? Because cheap doesn't always equal value. So we're gonna talk about what's going on in the areas, amenities, property management, and then some other factors that you might wanna consider when you're looking to buy a property here. So without any further waiting, let's dive into this and let me break all of this down for you guys. So you're looking to build in Belize. Now, it is a bit of a daunting task, but with the right systems and the right team, it can be a lot less daunting. Although building anywhere in the world, you're gonna have issues to overcome and work through. So I'll tell you guys that right out of the gate, nowhere is gonna be perfect, but we're gonna to try to minimize the issues that you find when you're going into an area. So first and foremost, let's talk about Secret Beach. And there's some major updates that have happened to the Secret Beach area from a logistics standpoint. When you're building, the key things you're gonna to wanna to look at is, you know, is it hard to get my labor force out there? You know, are they close by to the area? Do they have to travel long distances every day to get there? And although Secret Beach is a little bit further, it's not so far that it's ridiculous for crews to get out there and get back every day. So. It's not that bad from that standpoint. But what about getting materials in? Because you have to get a lot of materials to site. I've built a lot of stuff in Belize. I'm building an addition to our office here. And one of my biggest factors in my time frame of my build is how quickly can I get the materials there? Can I store them in a place that they're not gonna get damaged by rainwater or they're gonna get stolen or things like that where they're just left on the site? because that can be a huge problem and really bring your build cost up. The major update in the Secret Beach area is that there is a new barge port that is being established there. As of this point right now, I'll take you down. The only barge port is right here at the southern end of the island. So all the way by the Mahogany Bay, I guess, close to the very southern end. And that barge port is right here where you see this Caribbean Queen Depot. That's where essentially all the materials, anything coming into the island, it's coming through this point right here. So with this new area being established in Secret Beach, and I will say it's not open to the public. So if you're hitting other people up, asking them about it, it's something they probably don't have access to yet because really it is something that our Remax team and just a few other people exclusively have access to right now. Obviously we're helping our clients use this port as well. We've already brought some prefab houses in for our clients through this uh, area. So something that's coming potentially in the future will be open to more people. But for now, it's something that we have pretty exclusive access to. So big, big update for the area. It's going to change bringing your materials in to build on your site or bringing prefab houses in because I guess it was about 2016 when I did one of the first prefab houses there maybe a little later, maybe 2017, but I brought it in right here at the Secret Beach area. And now it's just become so busy that bringing these prefab houses in there, it's really not you know, logical in any sense to have to move all the Secret Beach letters, drive a house through there. It's just a little ridiculous. So this is a huge update for the area and has a major impact on the logistics. Next up, is it on grid? You need to look at when you're building if something is on grid, because that's going to be a major factor in your build cost. Why is that? Well, when you're building, they're going to need to operate power tools. You're going to need to get heavy equipment to over to that site. You're going to need a lot of power to actually get the structure into the ground. So when you do look at an area that's off grid, bear in mind that they're going to need to get a generator to that site. They're going to need to run that generator throughout the build process and that fuel is going to increase your cost of building. So it can be more costly to build in the Secret Beach area. That's why some people do look at the prefab units, although there are economical ways to stick build on site. Now, project management. We've established project management on site at Secret Beach. So when you work with our team, 
we can refer you to our designated project management for the area. They're gonna help you go through the whole process. You know, what are you gonna build? Who are you gonna build with? Where are you getting the bids from? What are the progress reports? When do I make my, you know, draw payments for my construction? All of these little details, keeping an eye on your site, making sure it's going good. We have established that there, so it is available in Secret Beach. And that's a big asset when you're going through the building process because so many of our clients aren't here and you need at least a set of eyes on the project to see what's going on. Finally, road access. So for the most part, Secret Beach does have road access. You can get into most areas. There's some areas where you might find a better deal in a lot that doesn't have road access. Now, if there is set plans to get roads into that area, that's gonna be a major impact for you guys from a building standpoint, knowing that someone with heavy equipment is putting those in, because I know a lot of people, they buy a lot, they don't have a road going there, and then this whole situation gets so much more complicated and we do not want that for you guys. So that's Secret Beach. Next up, let's talk about Mahogany Bay. Now, from the perspective of logistics and building, Mahogany Bay is the ideal location out of all of these, and you're gonna see why pretty quickly. I mentioned before that the barge port to bring supplies in is located right here. So when you look at the location of Mahogany Bay, it is literally adjacent almost to that barge port. The other benefit of looking at Mah Mahogany Bay is the canal system within Mahogany Bay. So every lot is waterfront. You have Caribbean Ocean access. You can exit right here, or you can exit right here and go up to the beach here, or you can go down south over here. But from a logistics standpoint, that helps you too, because you can literally barge your materials right over to your lot. So like I mentioned before, I'm building this addition to our office in here, right there on the side of our office. And it's so easy for me to get materials here because I can either get them shipped to the port right here, or I can get them delivered right to the site. So from that standpoint, it does not get any easier. Is it on grid? We just put out a big update for Mahogany Bay. As many of you know, streets one to four were on grid. At this point, the power is going in in the back streets of phase one. And from there, it's gonna go into phase two. So building in Mahogany Bay from a logistics standpoint, you have the power either there or currently going in. And if you didn't see that video, definitely check that one out after this because it's a super exciting update. Project management. There is set project management in Mahogany Bay. They're gonna quote out with the preset builders and the list of builders here are some of the best in Belize. So you have good, reliable builders and the project management team is gonna be with you every step of the way. And it's a very robust project management team. They have multiple engineers, designers, architects, they have everything on this team and it's gonna be really making your life a lot easier. Then you have the architectural plans, right? So you know that something common in Belize is having an area that's a residential area, but at the end of the day, you might find that someone builds a bar, builds something that you might not want beside your house on the lot beside you. This can happen in a lot of areas of Belize and a lot of areas of the island. Mahogany Bay is one area where you know that there's architectural controls and that's gonna make your life so much easier. It's protecting you and also you have the benefit of working with the architectural team. At this point, there's two approved architects in here and you can get an amazing plan that fits your needs. So really streamlined building. And I say that knowing that building in Belize can be difficult either way, but the most streamlined building process you can pretty much come across. Next up road access. I don't know if our, how our time lapse is doing, but at this point you've probably seen that Mahogany Bay is all road access. The road is paved all the way down to Mahogany Bay from the airport and it takes maybe 10 minutes to get here on a golf cart. So probably when you see our time lapse, it's gonna say something around 10 minutes. That's pretty much what it is. And yeah, that's building in Mahogany Bay. Now let's go up north to the northeast. And for me, this is when things get a little bit trickier because it is more remote. You know, you have to find a way to get your supplies in you're gonna to have to go all this way. So going up, going up, here's the turn to Secret Beach. And then it turns into essentially one road with little roads going in. And from here still, we've had a lot of people come into our office and say, oh, I, you know, I bought a lot up in Punta Azul or somewhere like this. We're still going guys. So like going up to Tranquility Bay and this is Margaritaville right here by Tranquility Bay. So like 
we're talking about essentially going all the way to Mexico. Now, some people might say, oh, well, it's waterfront. Well, this is great. I can barge my materials right up to my lot. Well, yeah, that would work if it wasn't for the fact that when you get up to this point, you're gonna notice the reef has a lot of areas where it actually goes in towards the land. And even navigating those in a small skiff like Belize Vice can be tricky. I know for me a couple of times going up by Portofino, areas like that, even further down south here, you have to know where the reef is located or you're probably gonna hit your motor and hit your prop, which we don't want that for the reef and we don't want that for your boat. So knowing the fact that the logistics are gonna be a lot trickier to get materials to your site, that's the first factor there. Is it on grid? To a certain extent, yes. We have had some people come in and tell us that they acquired properties even north of where the power ends. It ends about here. But buying properties up here around Bocklar Chico, and then here's Rocky Point where the reef touches, like that's gonna be off grid. But overall, you're probably gonna be dealing with on grid, which is gonna make your life easier. But getting your labor force from typically where the locals, the local workforce lives right here, right beside Mahogany Bay or right up here, going all the way up here, it's gonna take a lot of time every day for a whole crew to take their bikes and get to your site and get back. So again, this is going to bring your build cost up and it's gonna be tricky to find a project manager that's capable of getting there every day because in that area, there's just not a ton of construction. There's Margaritaville, which is going up. It's a beautiful project, going great. But outside of that, they're obviously not looking to manage third-party houses for you know other people. They're doing their own thing. Getting a project manager to oversee your construction project here, I can tell you it's gonna be very tricky. Road access, for the most part, a lot of the properties have road access via this main road, but there's a ton of lots that we'll see that they have no road going up there. They're just in this area where the road has basically ended. I've gotten stuck in my car here probably 50 times, but basically from there, getting into your lot is essentially impossible. So this goes back to cheap, doesn't always mean value. Talk about that more in the price and uh, path of progress section of this video, but definitely from a logistics standpoint, it is undeniable, guys. This is a very difficult area of the island to build in, and it's going to be more expensive. With that being said, let's talk about the prices and let's talk about the path of progress. So the prices and the path of progress. Let's get into this, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible for you guys. Right now, we'll go from Secret Beach again to keep our order cohesive. The latest comps on beachfront lots have sold for with road access for about $550. We've seen some for $600, some even that we've heard just closed for around 750. So road access, beach lots there, that's the price that you're looking at approximately. You might find some lots that don't have road access going further north on the west coast in the range of 200, 250, but your logistics at that point are gonna be the exact same as over here, even potentially more difficult, and there's gonna be an array of other issues we'll get into when we get to the other section of this video. Interior lots right now, we're looking at for areas like Grand Belize, you're looking at around 35,000. Uh, smaller lots, 60 by 75. Palmaya and West Key and Habitat, you're looking at around 50,000. But these are really amazing prices right now, especially when you factor in the path of progress. We talk about it a lot, but with the utilities coming into the mix, eventually whenever those do hit it's going to have a major impact on what the prices are because the average price for a fully serviced lot right now in san pedro is approximately almost a hundred thousand so we're talking about double where it is now that's something that people can really look forward to the next big thing we can talk about again road infrastructure development so you'll see this whole area to the southern end of the island on this leg of the island you could say going all the way down to aruna there's roads opening up there there's new projects, new roads going in, and the whole dynamic of the West Coast is shifting. I won't go too long on this, but because the reef is over here, this is where all the development took place. Now people are realizing, holy, these West Coast beaches are insanely beautiful. We wanna go over there. And there's other factors that are making people go there too, but you see the sunsets, and now this is becoming the highly coveted area. Next up, talk about Mahogany Bay. So is Mahogany Bay in the path of progress? Did you miss the boat? Well, let's take a look here at the overlay. 
So you'll see here, Mahogany Bay is relatively developed out. There's already utilities going in. There's already a Hilton hotel here. There's already over 20 commercial businesses. There is a tremendous amount of stuff in Mahogany Bay, but it's undeniably in the path of progress. When you look at utilities going in right now in streets five, six, seven, and eight, phase two is a whole other area where you're gonna see equity appreciation. And I tend to refer people to look at markets like Cayman Islands or Miami and look at what canal front lots go for in those locations. Cause this is a new concept for Belize. They go upwards of a million dollars. So really right now we're ground floor, especially when you factor in, you can keep a boat right out front of your place and there's a moratorium on docks on the East coast. So it's a huge factor. Utilities going in, new homes right now in Mahogany Bay, there's approximately 50 homes going vertical with so many more working with the architectural team and project management team. Pretty easy to say, yes, Mahogany Bay is in the path of progress. And not only is it a good buy now from a standpoint of getting into something that's already established enough, but you have a major runway while phase two develops and these back streets develop to capitalize on the equity appreciation. Now let's go to the Northern end. There's some great developments going on in the Northern end. One that we're excited about is Margaritaville, but bear in mind, that's not new construction. That's an old project called Sueño Del Mar that they're revamping and rebranding into a Margaritaville. So in terms of new stuff going in up here, you'll see it's relatively sparse. And a major reason for that is the fact that the logistics are a lot trickier. Quick rewind, forgot to mention to you guys, the prices in Mahogany Bay right now for a lot are 175 for east facing lots and 200 for west facing lots with phase equity price increases constantly happening. And only you know several months ago, they were 150. So just to quickly note on path of progress. Now going to the east side, talking about prices, you can find some beachfront lots in the area of Mata Chica for around 450, 500, 550. You might find some deals that you're like, holy smokes, I just found a beachfront lot for 125,000 in Ambergris Key. Come to find out it's over here and you can't even access it with a boat because of the reef and all of these issues. So make sure you're looking at what it is make sure if you do want to buy there and you're saying you know what i don't really care i want to go to that area make sure you have a road make sure that you have a contractor that's ready to build up there make sure you've already figured out some of these variables because it is going to be a little bit of extra homework and we hate seeing people buy something and then saying i bought this and i was on a boat up by mexico and now i find, you know i can't even build on it so guys please make sure you're doing your research on that and looking into it before you do anything Next up guys, let's talk about amenities. So what can you do? You're in Belize now, you're in the tropics, life is good. What are the amenities around you? Well, let's get into that. When you're in the secret beach area, obviously a big factor is gonna be the wide array of bars and restaurants you can go to. Being able to go to the water park, still being able to get to town in about 30, 45 minutes in that range and having some great locations along the way like Truck Stop or Cocoa Beach and other, you know, um, Rum Dog. We talk about Rum Dog, shout out to Rum Dog, love that spot. Being able to go to those places along the way makes it a really good location to be in. Now let's go down to Mahogany Bay. So you guys see San Pedro Town is here, the airstrip is here, like I mentioned. This is about a 10 minute drive. So putting into perspective to go all the way up here, you'll see that it's gonna be more than an hour, but going into mahogany bay you have the sushi restaurant you have the barcade you have a boat right out front of your house if you want it and i've done videos on this before that opens up the whole lifestyle of belize being able to get on your boat go out the canal system here pull up the secret beach go to a private beach have a cookout go snorkeling go diving go fishing i can go on and on about that but that's you know you're right there being able to go grocery shopping and with a marketplace coming into mahogany bay in the near future that's going to be huge but if not you have all these options to go grocery shopping. I did my little video on it before, but you've got, you know, fruit stands over here. You got Caribbean chicken, you've got green market, you've got super buy right over here. So it's so many options and you're right by the barber shops. There's a hair and nail salon in Mahogany Bay. From an amenity standpoint, I can keep droning on, but you guys get the picture. This is where the best amenities are. So guys, when you're looking at the amenities on the northern end of the island, it's a completely different landscape. If you go a little further south, you do have some places like uh, like Portofino or Mata Chica, but these are still a little ways back from where a lot of the people that 
are sending lots our way that they're looking at are located. So the amenity standpoint is gonna be very difficult to really find stuff to do. There's a marine reserve up here, so fishing can be difficult. And really just, it's a trickier place from a lifestyle perspective, being able to go to the grocery store, being able to go get your haircut, being able to go to the bars, meeting your friends, like it really becomes infinitely more difficult. Now, with that being said, if you're the type of person that's just saying, I wanna be somewhere with me, my dog, my cats, and I wanna chill out, then this is a very cool spot to be. And it's gonna be a more slow paced, low key lifestyle. And if you're that type of person, then definitely look at it. Just keep in mind the, the path of progress. I don't see it there as much because there's very little development going on there at this point. Could be a very long term play if you have a very long time frame. Now let's quickly talk about property management. I'm not gonna go into this too much. Mahogany Bay has designated property management and the other two areas don't really have designated property management at this point. You can find some people that will manage properties there, but it's gonna be more difficult. And let's get into the other section, which I'm gonna quickly knock these out for you guys before we close this video out. A big factor on the East Coast is the sargasm. It is seasonal, but it is something that does kind of stink and it comes in from time to time and it makes the West Coast beaches a lot more attractive. You never have that at Secret Beach. It only goes to the East Coast. You never have it in Mahogany Bay because it's not gonna make it into the canal system. So that's really an East Coast thing. Getting your supplies, which I already touched on. There's no grocery stores up in that Northern end for quite a ways. So even going grocery shopping is gonna be difficult. Emergencies are quite a bit more difficult when you get to that Northern end, getting gas, just all of these things are really just your daily life or security. If you're someone that prioritizes security, having the gated 24 seven security in Mahogany Bay, that's a big asset because up there, it's really you and your neighbors and that's kind of it, right? And not that it's a dangerous place, it's more just like, if you're worried about petty crimes or stuff like that, or you're just someone that wants the peace of mind at night, then having that gated security is a big factor. And internet speeds, fiber optic internet in the first streets of Mahogany Bay. The plan is to extend that out, but really just a high level overview, a high level overview for you guys of exactly what you're looking at between these three areas. If you feel I missed anything, let me know, get in the comment section and we can always add it in. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.